Hello everyone, welcome back to the series on hand calculations. Today, in this video, we are going to be discussing the tray factor. So we can start with the basic definition of the tray factor. It is another ratio of doses, one with the tray in the beam, uh, with field size R and depth D, to the dose with no tray for the same field size and the same depth at the same setup SSD. So this is the geometry that we're dealing with. On the left, you can see uh, the denominator of the equation where there's no tray in the beam and on the right it's the same exact geometry the only difference is that we place that tray in the beam and then we take the ratio of those doses in order to see uh, the difference in dose between the trade beam and the non-trade beam. And I want to point out that the purpose of the tray is not to modify the beam whereas with a wedge we are actually modifying the beam you see a really large effect with attenuation but with the tray uh, we're trying to not disturb the beam as much as possible so typically the tray factor is a correction on the order of two to three percent whereas with the wedge it can you know be up to like 30 to 50 percent and so you can see uh, that the purpose of the tray is not to modify the beam, it's just to mount different blocks and different treatment aids. So what does the tray factor actually do and why do we need the tray factor? Well, it accounts for the attenuation that happens in the tray as the beam is passing through the tray. And if we don't account for that attenuation, then our dose is not going to be accurate. And another important thing to note about the tray factor is that it is constant for every treatment geometry. So you measure it once at some arbitrary depth and field size, whatever you choose, and then you just apply that same tray factor to all the other geometries that you might use. Now, this might not be completely accurate. You might have a little bit of a depth dependence due to beam hardening and also a little bit of a field size dependence, but all of these are likely to be within a couple percent, and so we just assume it to be constant for all the other geometries. It's also important to note that it's different for every beam energy, since higher energy beams are more penetrable, uh, the attenuation properties in the tray will be much different uh, than a lower energy beam. Say, compare 15x to 6x, it's going to be different. So here I'm going to show an example of a tray and what it might be used for. So this is an example of a slotted tray, which is just a piece of plastic with some slits cut into it. And you can see there is a block mounted on this tray. This block was actually used as an eye shield for a 2D whole grain treatment. And these things are designed to attenuate the beam as little as possible. That's why it's just a piece of plastic, uh, whereas uh, the block is much thicker and a heavier material, so it actually attenuates the beam much more. Uh, but yeah, this is just an example of a tray. And that's going to be it for the video on tray factors, and thank you for watching.